So far we have seen how to access the internal temperature sensor inside of the microcontroller. Let's take a look at how we can look at an external voltage connected to a pin of the microcontroller. We might want to measure some kind of voltage coming into the microcontroller. The example that I used in the AVR series was, a, was an accelerometer. But I also showed you how to look at voltage using a potentiometer. And I think I want to do that with this particular project where we can take a potentiometer and use it as a voltage divider to bring in different levels of voltage between zero voltage, which is ground, and to VCC, which is the 3.3 volts. So we're going to use this potentiometer to vary the voltage between those two ranges, or the, the range of 0 to 3.3 volts. And on the microcontroller, these generally the ADC is in this area. The, the voltage for the ADC is located here on these pins. But then the following pins in this location are where the input pins are for the analog to digital converter. When you turn the potentiometer, the wiper will either be on the top of the resistors or the wiper will be on the bottom of the resistors. What this is doing is it's changing the values of these resistors when you move the wiper. So in this scenario, you would have the two resistors looking like this. And in this scenario, you would have a little bit of a resistor on the top and then you'd have a lot of resistance on the bottom. So you have a large resistor top, small resistor on the bottom, and in this scenario you have a small resistor on the top and a large resistor on the bottom. And if the wiper is in the middle, like in this case, you'd have an even number of resistors in this voltage divider. You can use the Ohm's law formula to solve for this, but instead of going through all of the, the formula to figure this out, I'm just going to give you the voltage out is equal to the source voltage, which is 3.3 volts, and then you'll have the, there's two resistors in this scenario. There would be R1 and there would be R2. So to get the, the voltage output from in between those resistors, you have the, the R1 on top and the R1 plus the R2. So let's say that the R1 is equal to 0.5, like the, the wiper is near the top. You have 0.5 here. And I'm not using the, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say 0.5 ohms, just to make this simple. And the bottom we would have, let's say, 5 ohms. So we have half of an ohm, resistance on the top here, and then you have 5 ohms resist resistance on the bottom. And that works out to 0.3 volts. Now let's look at a scenario where the wiper is on the lower end. So let's say the we're using 3.3 volts, and the R1 would be the larger one, which would be, let's say, 5 ohms. And on the bottom, you'd have 5 ohms plus 0.5 ohms. And that works out to 3 volts. So you can see that is lower, and there's higher resistance on the top, but lower resistance on the bottom, that you have a higher voltage, closer to the maximum vol voltage you have on the circuit. You can never actually go over the amount of voltage you have. You can only go between the 3.3 volts and the 0 volts. Let's take a look at what pin we can use for the analog to digital converter. You can see that those pins are here. We've already set these up. We have the power going to the power rails, which is the VDD and the VSS. I forgot to put this one in. This is ADC IN0. And I'm going to use this pin here, a pin, the IN1. 
the IN0 is really close to my power pins and on the breadboard it's very difficult to get the potentiometer in that location so I'm going to use the IN1 and at the IN1 we'll have that connected to the wiper and we'll have the resistor potentiometer one end going to ground and the other end going to 3.3 volts, the power rail, or VCC. Let's go ahead and set up the circuit. The IN1 is pin number 15, it's right here. So I'm going to take the potentiometer and plug it in right at that location. I think that's the right location. I'm going to directly connect these pins here to the power rail. But you might want to use a resistor just in case you go to one end all the way and you might short out the pin. Which was a comment in one of my other videos for the AVR series. So the wiper pin is actually on the back at this location, which is on the same tie strip as number 15. So I'll just take, it doesn't really matter which pin I go to, uh, what ground or VCC, just as long as they're the opposite. So I'll take one pin and go to positive, and I'll take the other pin and go to negative. The programming for this is really simple because we, we've already created the code that we need to do this measurement. And all we're going to do is we're going to remove any of the temperature sensing code that we have in here. We won't need those anymore. This is actually the temperature sensor, the ADC channel that it uses. We're gonna change that to channel one. IN1 matches with channel one for the pin number 15. We won't need the VREF either. I'm just gonna comment that one out because we may need that one at another time. And I'm going to remove the slope and the temperature. Uh, let's see, maybe I can change it to something else. I'll call it pot for pot reading, potentiometer reading. And this one I'll just keep it blank. So we want the actual number to be in this location here. I can put a space after that since I have some room. We're not going to need this slope formula anymore. And we won't need to be specifying it on the LCD either. We won't need the temperature computation. So we'll put the... This is, a, the, uh, this is X5, let's see. One, two, three, four five, six. So we're going to put up the sixth, the sixth position here. And we actually need the, instead of temperature, we need the ADC DR data register. So we're just going to put the data register reading directly onto the LCD, which is the reading from the pin number 15, the IN1. So I don't see anything else I need to change. Let's go ahead and compile the code and see if we have any errors. Build failed. So it looks like I took something out maybe. Oh, I'm not using ADC, I'm using ADC1. So I need to change that. Let's do it again. Okay, the build was successful. So the microcontroller has been flashed. It looks like I was off a little bit on the... You can still see an X there, but we can still take a look at the results. I'm going to use a screwdriver in the potentiometer and let's... I'm going to turn it up. So we can see that the number is climbing. And you can see that there's a lot of, there's um, the decimal and the zeros. And that's because I use the LCD float 
send a float, not send an integer. Let's see how high I can go. I don't want to go all the way. I might have gone there. So I got a 38, 30 something reading. So if I go all the way down, I should go down to almost zero. I don't want to go all the way to zero. I went to zero. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's get a closer look at this. Okay, you can see that the number is there. So I'm turning the potentiometer. I'm barely touching the potentiometer, making, I'm just wiggling the, the screwdriver, makes it move quite a bit. And it looks pretty stable, actually. So you can see we got all the way to a 40, 43 or something like that, 40, 40 something. And then all the way down to zero. So let's take a look at what a 4040 would be in a binary number and see what bit resolution we're getting. So let's take a look at the decimal to binary converter and we can see that 4040 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 bits. So we do have 12 bits of resolution. Let's do the reverse. Let's see. So let's take a look at a binary number with 12 ones. Let's see what that number is. So that's 4095. So we were pretty close to 4095. And there's going to be a little bit of resistance at the top, at, at some point in the voltage divider. Even the wires produce resistance. So I think we had a pretty successful attempt at using the analog to digital converter uh, from one of the input pins. So now we, we know, we, we're pretty confident that we can apply a another device on this microcontroller that outputs some voltage between a range and get some number from that on the microcontroller and we can use that number in some way. Thank you for watching.